Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Josh RV Nerd, and coming in behind us here at 2,635 pounds, Rockwood has proven that dynamite can come in small packages. This is the 15 TB, which is a, a, a really cool, it's a little floor plan that has a lot of flexibility. It is the definition of 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound sack. This thing has a, what I call twin to king vertible bed system that it can also be a, a daytime double lounge, perfect for staring contests, by the way. Well, point out that a, a little bit as we go but um it also it, it can act like a, a big dinette space and it's cool because this is an amazing little camper for a solo runaround person but it converts into a big bed space uh really conducive to couples camping um or I, i've met some parents who uh have like a small child and they do a lot of co-sleeping this would work very well for that there's all sorts of different people here and there's there's one specific demographic of people i think really gets largely ignored by the rv industry i think this would work really well for it. and that is the single parent who wants to take their kid out for uh you know some weekend bonding and some memory building and something like that because with the twin bed arrangement you and your kid can each have their own separate sleeping spaces and that's what i love about these twin bed setups uh they they can be so functional and flexible and do things that a normal bed arrangement just cannot do now um everything in this rv does two different things we're looking at double asdell construction which is asdell inside and outside the walls this is an all aluminum skeleton and i will actually leave you a link in the video description where you can see the geo pro factory and get to see one of these built from the ground up effectively now um as we go i always appreciate it if you leave me a couple notes let me know what you think about her what you like what you don't what you'd see change given the opportunity because sometimes we have other campers that might work for you and i'm i'm so sorry i i've been um uh, I've been spraying it and not saying it lately. I'll see if I can't work on that. <laughs> but uh, if you appreciate the, uh, I'll tell you where this thing rocks. I'll tell you where it doesn't. Uh, and if you like that fair way of looking at things, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. Let's get inside. And you know, I never really know how to start these things. So I figured I would just start this one in king bed mode and then kind of transformer convert it around because like a transformer with these, there's more than meets the eye. Uh, so this is down in what I call king vertible mode right here, where uh, you know you just the, uh, the the cushions that will become our, our back dinette cushions, our, our backrests, they just slide up in the middle. The table folds down in the middle. You can see that sticking out a little bit, and you can use this thing like one big bed. And nothing says you have to do anything else with it. I have seen people take a model like this and just put uh, a, another mattress on top of that, and you know just call it good, or an air bed that they could take down on a rainy day if they get stuck inside there's no rules there's only the limitations we place on ourselves in here and between the light color palette the generous lighting package which let me reach over here and just kind of click that so you can see uh I, i'm not joking uh they have a they got a really good lighting package in such a small trailer this is not a budget camper this is a premium trailer it's just a small trailer you saw the blackout nightshades. If you want to totally block the sun out of this thing, you can, because even the entry door has a privacy shade, by the way. All of those are going to open for cross breeze. And you see that this, uh, you know, big big bed thing can convert into uh, a bit of a dinette. Now, I, I want to acknowledge something real quick here. You look at this and you're like, uh, that table sits a little too low for me. That's kind of my fault. Um, there are little rubber foot uh pegs that come on this so that you can kind of height adjust it a little bit and they'll boost it up a couple inches and when i was setting the table up i knocked one off and i i it evaporated i have no idea where it went it's like have you ever dropped something like uh you know between the uh, the seat and the console of your car man you might as well call it kind of lost there's a black hole in there somewhere well somewhere there's a black hole with one of those foot pegs so i took the other three off so the table would actually sit level so that's why the table sits uh you know a little low but I mean, if you're looking at this, that is like, you can definitely sit at least four adults there, let alone one or two people that the camper is really sized for. So it's even like, you know, playing cards friendly with friends. But once again, nothing says you have to do that. If you want to leave that uh, just wide open, you can take that free floating table outside. Uh, you can leave this like a nice open lounge, which as I mentioned earlier, is ideal for a staring contest. But remember, it's not just about the king bed. I called it a twin to king vertible bed. And again, if you're like, you know, not every couple wants to sleep right on top of each other. Some couples like that space. Uh, 
there's the uh, the single parent or the buddy camp kind of situation. Uh, you know, just a couple uh, friends running around. It's it's not always uh, you know about singles or couples or family camping. Sometimes there's just there's different ways to do it. You could use one as a bed. You could leave one as a lounge. Uh, it could be an awesome solo camper like that. And just in case you're curious, you see how there's some handy household outlets up there. Now remember, this comes with a thousand watt inverter. Every household outlet you see will actually be wired to that inverter. So if you want to put a fan, an alarm clock, a phone charger in that little middle side stand right there, again, guys, there's no rules. You do what you want with this, how you want with this. Now, they did a good job of putting storage anywhere they could, but in a little camper like this, it's kind of wonky for me to record on video. So I'm going to hit this in a couple passes. Nice that we actually have some, I think, fairly decent dresser space. Although, um, you know, you could kind of use that for a little bit of kitchen stuff. But when we flip around, I think you'll see that you don't need to. Now, this is a 12-volt compressor fridge. But they've intentionally gone with uh, not like a giant 10-foot one. I think it's like 5.3 cubic feet. And you might go, why would they do that? Well, one reason, physical space. Uh, those things are bigger, and it really bosses up the floor plan. You might have to actually redesign this a little bit. They're a little wider. The second reason, I think probably the better one for a GeoPro's application, is power consumption. Uh, a bigger fridge is going to suck more juice off that battery or batteries, depending on how you have yours outfitted. So, uh, you know, a little less power draw to keep you off grid longer, not all that bad. Not to mention as small as this is, I don't know how much more cold storage you could possibly need in a little thing like this. Now, I kind of realized I had a really perfect opportunity standing at the front of this thing to kind of demonstrate the way that the roof is kind of set up and angled. So over here on the sidewall, it's 6'1", and you can see how from my hat. Um, my head hits the wall uh, before I, I get to the side because I'm taller than 6'1". That's how physics work. But it's six and a half foot tall in the middle here. They have a five inch vault and you can really see that with that trim piece right behind me here. It's really cool how they do this because the walls, the roof, everything on this is laminated except for the floor, which is a, a plywood floor decking. It's still an aluminum frame though. That did not used to be the case with Geos, by the way. That's something they adopted, I think, beginning with the 22s, maybe late 21, but they haven't been doing that long. They bulked up the floor, it added some weight, but they really added some strength to it. And if you want a good house, you start with a good foundation, frankly. Um, but th this is actually two roof sections that meet in the middle. That's why there's that vertical trim piece right here, or straight linear trim piece, because it's not vertical, it's lateral. What, you get the idea, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I say that I don't care about labels and then I spend too much time working on them. I need some caffeine. Um, yeah, we are seamless on the roof though. There is no roof seams. The skin is a one piece exterior. And again, please take some time to check out that GeoPro factory tour. I'll leave you that link. And you, I actually show you a cross section of how this stuff comes together. It's really cool. So that's where we were standing. Right now I'm over here in the little corner of the dinette, bed, lounge, do it all, Swiss army, sofa, whatever you want to call it. And again, we've got awesome cross breeze windows. You have windows off the back. You have windows off the sides. Um, a lot of people will ask, can you get a windshield offset in that nose cap above the kitchen? And I wish you could, guys. I wish you could, but you cannot. They just don't have any jigs. They don't have any structure uh, allowed for that. So it's just not something this one can do. Now, if you look up top, you see that XL vent fan there. The shower actually has its own mini fan. That is kind of acting a little bit like a stovetop uh, heat exhaust hood. And you see the TV is pivoted around to face. So it's not a massive TV, but it's a small camper. It's a 22 inch. It's it's actually uh, an HD TV and um, DVD combo unit. It is 12 volt. Did I mention that? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself again. I, I, I think I'm gonna break down and get some soda today. I need that caffeine. Up top here though, you see your uh, uh, Bluetooth AM FM stereo with HDMI plugs. There's HDMI plugs still available on the TV. And up top is a switch for the Wi-Fi Ranger, which is a signal access point that you can also um, utilize. Like there's an LTE upgrade. You can do a little pay-as-you-go thing. Now, as long as we're over here, if I look straight over to the side, again, remember every outlet you see, like there's one over there just in front of the kitchen faucet, inverted. And the inverter switches just to the right of that. Uh, between the outlet and the switch is your barley poppinator. That's where you can pop the top off them cold ones. 
Um, has anyone noticed how they, uh, it used to be the Coors labels turned blue when it was cold. Now they're just always blue. I feel like I've been lied to. Anyway, over here is our charge controller. Uh, that is, uh, I've, I've got just a simple battery box hooked up to it right now. And even running all the lights, although I do have the refrigerator turned off currently, it is actually giving us a power surplus where we're gaining juice, not losing it, which I think is pretty cool. Now it's a small camper, but for the space they had available, I think they did pretty good in this kitchen. That being said, I always try to be fair, kind of like how I, I proactively pointed out that sadly, no, we can't have a front windshield. You know, I would, I'd like to, but we can't. Um, I do like that they went to a bigger sink. They've done that for about a season and a half now. The little pop-up power tower, the, people seem to either love or hate those. What is it about those people dislike? I would really like to understand those better. Because Now, I don't have one in the camper that I use. I feel like I would like one, but I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm not thinking about. Um, the stove area over here on the right is where I personally have a couple notes for this thing. I feel like we don't need a big three burner stove in this little camper. They use it because that's just what they use standard. You know those little two burner things? I'd love to see a two burner stove like here or here. I'd actually kind of like it in the middle so I had a little counter space on both sides. And if it's going to be against that wall, I really wish we had some kind of side splash over there. Anybody else? Is that just me? I feel like everybody's going to agree with that. Now, down below, some decent storage space. And I feel like those drawers used to just be pockets. Am I wrong on that? By the way, that microwave, um, you do have the option of switching that out for a convection microwave. This floor plan, though, is one of the very few. There just is not room uh, for a, uh, a gas uh, propane um, oven. Did you notice? Something I whine about all the time. I, I get that I whine about it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> there's an actual shade in the entry door because... Where the others wouldn't rock wood. Hey! That's your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. And then finally, the friendly neighborhood front corner wet bath. And I actually suspect this is where I might lose some people who weren't already familiar with this floor plan. This has what I like to refer to as the shoilet. You can do the three S's in here, but only two at a time. <laughs> it is a shower toilet combo. Now, down here, like all Rockwood uh, stuff, we have that shower miser system so that if you are boondocking, you don't waste uh, a drop of that fresh water. Now, uh, up here, you see you have the handy, uh, you know, like body wash and, and shampoo caddy. I mentioned there is, a, it's almost like a truck camper bathroom, frankly, where you got that little kind of cylindrical fan, that extra light right there. What's really interesting is this, like you look over here, you're like, what? There's a baggage door in the shower. I get that that looks super weird, but think about it. A baggage door that's designed to go outside, has a, it's, it's got a water seal. It's got a seal, so it doesn't matter if water splashes on it. Um, inside there, though, you can keep some dry towels or extra body washes or, you know, toilet paper. In those things that you need in the bathroom, you can keep in here. That is something... Uh, it, it, again, it's weird, but it's actually a really high functional item. So, uh, as always, let's take a look at this in road mode. Just kidding. This one's always in road mode. It's easy. I like, I, I like the space age kind of look on this thing. I'm normally not a fan of asymmetry, but the way that they did their decals as you walk around it, it has like a corner to corner symmetry as opposed to a, a left to right symmetry. And somehow that's enough like normally i'm very persnickety about that kind of stuff now uh again this is not the least expensive uh nor necessarily the lightest weight although it's not a really heavyweight kind of trailer but not the least expensive little camper you're gonna run into because it is loaded with stuff like behind this nose cap if you watch that factory tour that i mentioned in our intro here you'll see that all the way up that nose cap they actually have a radiant barrier and one of the funny things about this floor plan not having a windshield in that nose cap will actually help it maintain uh, temperature more easily. Then there's the little uh, things where they go above and beyond. Uh, now, Geo does not include a battery in that battery box, but we include your first one at no additional charge so that you can be uh, set to go. We also fill those double propane tanks, which have an auto changeover regulator. And look at that power tongue jack. So that used to be optional, that's now standard, but you see how it's got the little wheel on the front? This thing is small enough, it's light enough. It might fit into a garage or a barn or something like that. Uh, one person typically can really muscle this thing around, but especially if you got a helper, one to steer and one to push, you can hand park this thing like way off in the corner for storage purposes, which is really, really nice. Although, 
uh, Rackwood doing plus one more than everybody else says hold my beer. And they also include a nice little circular foot pad for that tongue jack so it doesn't wiggle jiggle around. But speaking of that, we've got the stable steps and we have four corner uh, stabilizer jacks to make this thing really lock down uh, properly at your campsite. Now the bottom right corner of the camper, you see a uh, simple side prep plug for a portable panel. That is a lot of alliteration, by the way, right there. Uh, very tricky early in the morning, especially since I uh, accidentally gave up being caffeinated because I don't like coffee and I pretty much cut out soda from my life here. Although I, I might make an exception today. I basically pulled an all-nighter last night trying to get caught back up. Uh, I, I want to get you down here so that you can see it does have that handy sewer hose caddy because you have limited outside storage on this and your spare tire over here. Um, you know, it's belly mounted to keep it out of the way. Now these are um, uh, Westlake radials, they're 15 inch tires and every GeoPro now standard has their uh, sport tire package which uh, goes to those uh, Westlake radials and um, also has an axle lift uh, applied to this, like a little spacer block effectively to give you more ground clearance because these things used to hug pretty darn close to the ground. And where that was kind of a sketchy thing sometimes is when you got to uh, like your sewer hose connections, um, you know, you, you, uh, you, you didn't want to rip them off or anything. Now, speaking of connections, we got ourselves a propane cooker hooker, propane quick connect shun. Uh, for our factory supplied griddle and I love the little work table that they include with this that's that's one of those extra little rockwood things not everybody does um, actually hey come on over mr. Matthew you guys don't realize uh, I jumped down this trailer right uh, right when it came in you get to meet one of our team here mr. Matthew he is one of our um, kind of pre-screener quality inspection sort of guys I don't want to hold him up he was uh, like hey hey you know I don't want to I don't want to get in the video well now it's too late buddy <laughs> now Outside storage is really at a premium on a little camper like this. So you can see this has what I like to call the junk in the trunk storage system. Did you know that's what that's called, Matt? You, you did not. No, that's that's because that's not what it's called. That's just what I call it. <laughs> no, go ahead, bud. Don't let me stop you. I want you to, to do your thing here. So you're getting to see a little bit of action in motion, ladies and gentlemen. I call it the junk in the trunk storage system because you can keep a, a lot of junk in that trunk back there. Now it goes under the headboard between the twin to king vertible bed system um, and under the door side bed, the opposite side bed, there's other system-y kind of things there. But did you notice all of the aluminum skeleton work going on here? One of the things you'll learn about Rockwood is anything that's going to be load bearing, they use a welded aluminum cage structure. So the entire shell of the camper and then something like a dinette or a bed, or in this case where the dinette is the bed, they still aluminum frame that. Now wall partitions, those might still be stick built because they're basically there just to create a, a visual break point. They're not really a, uh, like a structural item as it were the structure comes from other places even here in the little geos they have those smexy frameless windows which tilt open for airflow which on something like this if you're going to be um you know off grid uh and uh it, it, it's kind of nice where you don't always necessarily have hookup for your air conditioner and stuff like that uh kind of handy now the rv is not totally level the nose is down a little bit i just kind of want to give you uh, a view underneath so you get to see where all the sewer stuff is it is one consolidated outlet thankfully this does have uh you know a full outside utility shower like you're seeing right there which is uh, awful darn handy to be able to clean yourself up or you know maybe do some fish or something like that if you went out hunting and fishing um the uh, uh I, I think i mentioned this in the very beginning of the video but this is a double asdell using brand so and, and geopro always has been the inside and outside layers of those walls are both asdell that is a nice weight savings thing and god forbid anything bad happens to this we have some kind of uh you know water penetration which is nice flowery talk for leak um it's something that is far more robust and uh you know able to potentially uh hold up a little bit longer before some serious massive uh irreparable damage is is incurred and i tell you this is actually one of my favorite times of year to go camping that kickoff of the fall camping season at the time that we're recording this everything just is I, I, I don't know it's a little quieter it's a little calmer you got that nice little breeze going through the air you could wear a jacket you could not wear a jacket like you can just wear whatever you want you can be comfortable it's just nicer you know now you might have noticed there's that ladder on the back that's 250 pound rated um the uh uh solar package up here uh now standard on these and bigger than it used to be in the past that is 190 watt 
uh, panel up there. This has a 30 amp charge controller and a thousand watt inverter that is wired to all of the household outlets in this RV, though it will not run the microwave and the air conditioner. Um, at the time of this filming, GeoPro, I know for a fact, is developing a more robust solar package that could give you like air conditioner off grid, some lithium stuff, a big, bigger inverter. I don't have details on that yet. Uh, at the time of this filming. Uh, when I do, I'll probably make a separate video on it because that's what I do. Now, I want to address this big guy right here. GeoPros uh, normally have a low profile air conditioner which actually sits lower than the Max Air fan cover or the TV antenna slash Wi-Fi Ranger antenna. So why am I looking at this big honker over here? And the answer to that is basically shortages. GeoPros have been coming in kind of uh, sometimes with, sometimes without the low pro air conditioner. When they have them available, they're using low pros. At the very least though, you're always getting a full power 13,500 BTU air conditioner. Standing here right now, I will tell you, the specs that we put at the start of the video reflect the intended low profile air conditioner build. I don't exactly know how many inches this adds. I'm going to say for safety, you're probably adding about six inches. But if you ever need answers on something like that, it's very easy. You just call one of our team members over here and we'll walk out and we'll get a hand measurement for you because frankly, I don't care what manufacturer it is. I have learned over the years to not trust their measurements. They're usually close, but no cigar, you know? Um, you know, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Not in measurements. Not when you're trying to squeeze something under a uh, garage door or a barn door. How about we measure twice and we, uh, you know, crash into something zero times. Now, another quick note um, on weather packages. A common question we'll get on something like this is, is it for seasons? Uh, I figured I'd go ahead and proactively answer this. If you were going to ask that, and now you don't have to, at least hit the like button on the video or leave me a comment that says thanks. Short answers, no, no it's not. Um, the thing with the GeoPro is they have uh, basically bigger holding tanks uh, that are they're taller than the chassis, uh, so you can't really enclose it. These do have standard 12 volt tank heaters, which is really nice for extending your season, keeping your tanks a little bit protected, but something this size I've, i'm not really aware of anybody in anything this size that has truly tested proven four seasons functionality now um a j feather micro is a little bit bigger a little bit heavier but part of the reason is it has a bigger chassis so they have an enclosed underbelly and you can option tank eaters onto those and uh, the new ember rvs that'll be uh that are coming out they have an enclosed belly and tank heaters again i don't know that they're zero degree tested but just just to give you an idea the thing is though those are all bigger, heavier, more expensive. If you're trying to stay small, again, potentially SUV, minivan towable, depending on the capacities of the vehicle in question, these are just kind of the things that go with the territory, you know, Un unfortunately. So once again, thank you very much for joining us, guys. You've heard me talk about it. I always like to hear your input on it. And remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. Uh, so, you know, when you call us and you get a price tag, it's not that plus freight, plus prep, plus every other thing. We don't tack a couple extra grand onto that stuff. It's just not worth it, you know. Um, when you're ready, we're ready. And we'd love to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.